War Pugs, it's time for more When Day Breaks. It's been a bit since I've been able to do one of these. I'm glad I'm getting back to it. This is SCP-001, as done by Mr. Illustrated. All hail. Now, I am in absolute... Is is absolutely wonderful. All the things that have happened to this series up so far. This has been a truly creepy series, and I don't say that about many things. I have That's the reason I love the SCP series, because... A lot of them legitimately creep me out. Um, I don't like traditional horror movies because you can a dozen ways tell. I would have done this different. I would have done this different. Not in this case. Not in this case. The monster is truly horrifying. And now we talk about 682. The hard to kill reptile. Oh, now... I just don't know what to say, but we're going to get into it. I watched The Gate Guardian before I watched this one. Um, in fact, it was the second one I checked out. The war pugs are going crazy today. I cannot get, keep them calm, guys. But um, I watched that quite a bit ago. I've already checked that out. When I've, I've watched it just to catch up, just to refresh myself. We're going to jump into this. Guys, all of Mr. Illustrated links are, links are in the description down below. Please go check him out. You, If you've been with me in this series, you know I have enjoyed every step of this. I know you have as well. Let's get into it. This video is sponsored by my server manager and longtime supporter, Andre Bachot, who would like to ask you all to go and check out SCP Fragmented Minds, the amazing upcoming SCP game set on Mars, where you will fight to survive against several terrifying and lethal SCPs, nice. such as the Heart of Darkness, that I am personally voicing, the Flesh That Hates, the Sculpture, and even 682 himself. Nice. Follow the link below to back their Kickstarter. SCP-053 Testing Log Entry 034 August 19, 2007 Description of Test Introduction of SCP-682 to SCP-053 I seriously need to learn about 53. Events SCP-682 appears confused upon entry into the containment area. Additionally, it shows no sign of either SCP-053's effect or its own standard behavior. SCP-053 hides behind a chair in her containment chamber. SCP-682 lowers itself to the ground and rests its head on the floor. SCP-053 approaches SCP-682 and after several seconds of hesitation, briefly touches SCP-682's snout, before rapidly returning to hide behind the chair. SCP-682 does not react. Huh. After a few more seconds, SCP-053 approaches SCP-682 again and places a hand on 682's head. SCP-682 exhales through its forward nostrils. SCP-053 appears excited and hops in place before embracing SCP-682's head. What? For the remainder of the testing period, SCP-682 appears to be in a very docile state, with only two low-level escape attempts being made. SCP-053 is observed bringing toys and other items to SCP-682 and make several drawings on SCP-682's forward carapace with crayons. Huh? SCP-682 awakened in a vat of acid. Not for the first time. The monster struggled against some of the bindings on its arms and legs, snapping them immediately. The acid itself was no longer affecting him, it seemed. The room was darker than he remembered. Only a dull green hue illuminated his surroundings. The acid around him seemed to be mostly neutralized, but it still sizzled as he moved through it. He opened his mouth and pulled it in. With his strength renewed, 682 threw himself against the side. A few hard hits later and the edge shattered in a shower of metal, plastic and acid. SCP-682 tumbled out of the tank and onto the ground, ready for the attacks of whatever trash the Foundation would send to put him back into his cage. 682 is truly one of the more terrifying SCPs. I love it. But as he stopped and listened, nothing happened. No one came. Huh. The room itself was fairly large, built to accommodate both him and the containment tank. There were many observation chambers connected to the room, but the glass of each were varying degrees of shattered. Some still had traces of brown dried blood. The darkness was hampering his ability to truly see, but he could adapt to that easily enough. For a moment, it occurred to him that maybe the trash bags had abandoned this place. But that couldn't be right. 
He smelled them. Not in this room, but nearby. And in the dark green light still dripping with acid, the monster gave what one might approximate as a smile, if they were willing to really stretch the definition. 682 took a moment to process the new material it acquired in the tank into something useful. His abdomen momentarily swelled as the contents were forced elsewhere. A collection of tentacles grew quickly out of his back, Ugh. and he used them to help him feel his way towards an exit. He then leapt through an open door and made his way further into the site. SCP-053 Testing Log, Entry 124, May 7th through May 13th, 2012. Description of test. Testing continues exposure of SCP-682 to SCP-053 over a period of a week. Huh. Events. Previous attempts to terminate SCP-682 via SCP-053's primary anomalous mechanism have thus far proven useless. What is it about 53? However, in the past five years, several attempts have been made to neutralize SCP-682's hostility through repeated exposure to SCP-053. SCP-053 is old enough now to be cognizant of SCP-682's nature, but has become convinced that SCP-682 is a friend of some kind. SCP-682 will not act in a hostile manner as long as it is in the sole presence of SCP-053, and has on occasion begun to communicate with the girl. Huh. SCP-682 also appears to understand that its natural form can inspire fear in SCP-053, and will often, though not always, alter itself to appear less threatening for posterity. Species of what is 53? Canines such as dogs, wolves, foxes, and jackals are a common form for it to take. During the week of exposure, SCP-682 was significantly less dangerous, both in form and behavior. Additional tests were approved with the focus of facilitating long-term mutual containment. SCP-682 wandered the halls of the mostly abandoned site with a curious eye. These pieces of shit were hiding from him somewhere in here, and he was going to find out where. A dying light flickered in the darkness. Stupid garbage people technology. <laughs> the idea that they used their dumb inventions to keep him captive all this time filled him with rage. He smashed the light into a nearby wall and heard a distant noise in response. Dinner, he thought to himself. He loped down the hallway with renewed vigor. The smell of human meat growing stronger with each stride. He passed by empty offices and the occasional bloodstain, but gave them no mind. The doors to the cafeteria exploded open, the force proving too much for the hinges to handle. 682 charged in with a snarl. In front of him was a small, pathetic excuse for a settlement. There were only a few tables and chairs here, unlike the last time he rampaged through this part of the site. Huh. Disheveled tents and sofas lined the perimeter. The men, women and children were clad in rags and living in squalor, like they fucking deserved. Everyone stopped in place. One person screamed, it's here. The people here varied in preparedness, but most ran behind the lunch counter on the far side of the cafeteria. A few men and women emerged from tents with strange weapons in their hands. SCP-682 allowed them a second to realize their fate before he went to work. One of them, possibly the leader, yelled back at the others. Get the children out of here. We'll hold it off. Uh, no, you Darren, won't. one of the men, screamed as 682 leapt through the air. The strange weapon sprayed flames onto his body. 682 didn't even flinch as it landed on top of the man. He stared into the man's terrified eyes with glee before sinking his thangs deep into his neck and tearing out his throat. Lovely. The euphoria hit him as he felt the hot blood run down his gullet. The tang of the man's adrenaline lingered on his tongue like a fine seasoning. The monster looked up with a bloody jaw and bared its teeth again. 682 relished in the joy of murder as he bounded after the next nearest armed human. This one tried to kick a metal table over to create a barrier. Pathetic. 682 smashed into the table, sending it and the man behind it into the far wall. The broken body slumped to the floor. The creature recovered just as several of the weapons were turned on him. The flames poured out and onto his body. He roared in pain. He could feel his mass starting to decrease as these vermin tried to kill him. He willed his back tentacles out and several found perches in the chest or necks or heads of the rats that were trying to end his life. Well, A piercing scream came from one of the women as she watched her husband's head explode. Most of the streams of flame stopped. He leveraged the bodies of the newly dead against their compatriots, 
throwing them against the few remaining defenders. Some of them made a satisfying snap on impact. Ugh. Others lay broken or bleeding on the ground. SCP-682 puffed out his burnt outer layer and malted it. The fuel covering him continued burning as he left that skin behind. Oh my god. There were more pieces of trash here, but he knew what to do. The fire was beginning to catch on some of the cloth tents in this enclosed space. It wouldn't do for all these people to die if it was not by his hand. He scooped up some of the burning tents and sizzling flesh and approached the lunch counter. Dozens of people cowered in the kitchen behind it. SCP-682 went into the kitchen and made himself a hot meal. Ugh. Oh. SCP-053 Testing Log Entry 341 December 7th, 2020 Description of Test Additional attempts to utilize SCP-053 and SCP-682 to facilitate mutual containment. Events Despite a lack of direct socialization, SCP-053 has developed a mostly stable personality mostly. and appears to have a positive mental health outlook. However, the Ethics Committee has ordered that non-digital socialization is to be attempted if possible by means that will not trigger the object's anomalous effect. Despite Simmons, SCP-682's previous project head, ending the 053-682 containment project, it has been ordered to resume by the new project director. Okay. As such, SCP-682 was reintroduced to SCP-053. It appears that SCP-053 has strong memories associated with SCP-682, despite their last interactions taking place four years ago. The two regularly engage in conversations about topics relating to SCP-053's interests. It is unknown if SCP-682 has a genuine interest in the MCU or Korean pop groups, but SCP-682 at least pretends to find these topics interesting. As before, SCP-682 has done very little to actually attempt escape, and appears to avoid behaviours that would cause SCP-053 stress. Huh. Continued socialization is to be encouraged. SCP-053 marked an X across another date on the calendar in her room. She glanced at the unpowered television first, and then at her computer in the corner. She glanced across at her bookshelf, full of novels she had already read a hundred times. She looked at the slot in the door, wishing a new one would come through today. Perhaps she would read one of John Green's books again. Maybe. She smiled slightly and walked over to the window. The sun shone directly on her face. The people who took care of her had been surprised the first time that happened. They told her stories over the radio about how the sun had gone wrong somehow. How it was a miracle that she hadn't turned into a fleshy monster. Huh. She poked at the skin hanging under her upper arm and smirked. Fleshy monster. God, this was boring. It was always boring. She thought about maybe going back to bed, when a loud noise shook her from her thoughts. The sound of screaming and fire was starting to scare her. Then things went silent again. It didn't take long before the scream started again, and the noise didn't stop for several minutes. She went over to her bed and hid under the blankets. Eventually, the screaming stopped again. This time, it didn't start up again. After a few minutes, she peeked out from under her covers. The sun monsters must have finally found them. She threw her legs over the edge of the bed and reached under it. She pulled out her journal. Taped to the inside cover of it was a small key. So she's absolutely immune to the sun's effects. The people taking care of her had been clear. If she went outside, she'd die. There were too many germs and too many viruses or something. They told her that her immune system was compromised but with the way the world was going, they decided to trust her with the key to her own cell. In the worst case scenario, at least she could maybe escape. Maybe. She'd wait though. Whatever was out there might come for her next, but it couldn't hurt to look, right? She stood up and opened the small slot in the door. She could smell burning meat out there. They must have been cooking something when the monsters came. Hmm. It suddenly struck her that it was possible she'd be completely alone now. Darren used to bring her meals and he talked to her on the radio. Wait, the radio. She went to her computer desk and opened the top drawer. She pulled out the walkie-talkie and pressed the button. Darren? Darren, are you there? No response. Darren, it, it's Lainey. Please, if you're there, I, I'm scared. 682's rough, gravelly voice came over the radio. Lainey? Lainey's eyes lit up. Lizzie! Where are you? 
Down the hall. Lainey stood up and put on her best jacket before grabbing the key and opening the door. She tucked her journal into a jacket pocket and then she went to meet with SCP-682. SCP-053 Testing Log Entry 347 January 18th, 2021 Description of Test Additional attempts to utilize SCP-053 and SCP-682 to facilitate mutual containment. Events SCP-053 has taken to calling SCP-682 Elizabeth and various other shortened versions of <laughs> that name. Lizzie appears to be a particular favorite. Some interactions are no longer logged as there appears to be no danger associated with allowing the objects to continue to grow accustomed to each other. That is as so such, it is that is so creepy, but at the same time, knowing what 682 is is so oddly charming. Why are y'all barking? Are you kept, are you satisfied with yourself? Why are you grumbling? Why are you grumbling? Daddy's trying to do things. Why are you still grumbling? I swear you grumble all the time. You angry thing. You want to watch it? You want to watch it? Okay, let's watch it. It is unknown when this name began to be utilized exactly. The socialization is ongoing. Though SCP-682 <laughs> has on several occasions requested site staff for art and hair care supplies to acquiesce SCP-053's plans. These have been approved. <laughs> Note, I would like to oh caution site staff from assuming just because SCP-682 is decorated with glitter, rhinestones, and has had its back tentacles bound up into a ponytail, that the creature is not still dangerous. If you're not SCP-053, I guarantee you the object will kill you without a second thought. At the very least, please refrain from calling SCP-682 cute. Look at it. The sudden vibration from the tank explosion is what first got the sun's attention. A roiling flesh blob began to slowly approach the outskirts of the site, picking up more flesh as it came closer. The guards at the gate were easy enough to subdue, their balaclavas came off easily, and the sunshine did the rest. Uh. Once they were joined with the rest of humanity, the access codes to the facility were easy enough to input, a retinal and thumbprint scan were easy enough to pass, and the doors opened to the sun. A length of flesh began to spring out from the central mass and break into a dozen tendrils that crept along the floor of the welcome center. The scattering of men and women inside let out a muffled cr She saw herself. Hey, look, look. See yourself? Hmm? Yes, you are a cute pug. You're an adorable pug. You just bark too much. You were just barking and barking and barking and now you won't stop. Now you're just grumbling because daddy came and got you. And you want to spend time with daddy? Well, daddy's here. Cry Stop as grumbling. the tentacles wrapped around their necks and dragged them outside. Yeah. A few necks snapped in the process, but that wouldn't matter once they were joined with the sun. Deeper in the facility, the strings of flesh came upon the aftermath of the battle with SCP-682. A tendril reached out to begin gathering the bodies that weren't burning. Uh. Some were bleeding to death. Some were already dead. Some had already burned but most were intact. The kitchen would have to wait until the fire died down, but for now, these would do. The body slid across the slick and bloody floor and then out of the facility. SCP-053 testing log, entry 409, unknown date. Description of test, SCP-053's exposure to SCP-001. Are you serious? Events. Following the XK class scenario involving SCP-001, SCP-682 was returned with some difficulty to its acid bath. Continued testing of this type is no longer viable in the current environment. During relocation, SCP-053 was accidentally exposed to SCP-001. Oh, no. There was an expectation that SCP-053's anomalous ability would be neutralized by this encounter, or that the governing SCP-001 entity would absorb SCP-053 into its consciousness. This did not occur. 
SCP-053 has reported no direct or indirect understanding of SCP-001. It is currently not well understood why SCP-053 is immune to the effects of SCP-001. It may be related to the core hostility slash death inducing nature of SCP-053, its regeneration factor, or a previously unknown aspect of the anomaly. It is unlikely that SCP-053 will be very useful in the preservation of the human race, but she can certainly go places and do things that are difficult, or impossible otherwise. She is to be utilised in cases where risk of human staff is unacceptably high. SCP-001 generated entities appear to avoid a confrontation of SCP-053 directly. This may or may not be a permanent state of affairs, but will prove useful in the coming months. If such a situation presents itself where the utilisation of SCP-053 is required, her upbringing and status should be remembered and considered by all before deployment. Right. She has led an exceptionally sheltered life, and the customs and mannerisms of normal human society, particularly for someone her age, are largely absent in SCP-053. Note, give her a west-facing room with a window. She might be the only person on Earth who can enjoy a sunset. It might not mean much, but it costs us nothing. Wow. SCP-682 breathed heavily as it stalked the dark hallway between the cafeteria and SCP-053's room. This pathetic worm of a person had just called him Lizzie. Again. He knew exactly what he was going to do the moment he saw her. She'd die messily, and then he'd escape this place and find out why the Foundation had fallen, and then he'd kill every last living person on Earth. The door was right there. SCP-053. The graffiti was unmistakable. How many times had he had to endure this thing drawing on him? An absolutely disgusting creature was inside that room. Sort of. I mean... She was pretty alright, all things considered. <laughs> Frankly mistreated, if anything. SCP-682 was about to knock on the door when he stopped. He needed to think about how he was going to greet her. What? He started to speak to himself. Hey, Lenny. Long time no... Ugh, no, that's stupid. He stopped and shook his head. Keep it simple. She's already your friend. Just be like, Lenny, hi, I... And a hand rested on his shoulder. I already left the room, silly. SCP-053 leaned in and gave him a hug. SCP-682 grunted slightly and leaned into her. Sorry, Lane. I guess I was just nervous. SCP-053 smirked. Mm, no need. She leaned in to look at him more closely. Oh, dang, the acid really did a number on you. You want to go tell the others that you're here? SCP-682 looked back down the hallway. Sure, we can go say hi. <laughs> SCP-682 was trying to think of how to explain the bodies, as a fleshy soup found its way into the corridor. Two grotesque eyeballs rolled out of the slurry and examined the pair. Why do you hate me? Oh. SCP-682 and SCP-053 sat across from each other at the table. SCP-053's feet dangled off the ground in the large chair and she drank a cup of tea. She couldn't be more than eight or nine years old but she was holding her chin in a dignified pose. Lainey, I don't hate you. No. 682 licked from the bowl in front of him. 053 giggled slightly. When you come into my room, you look really angry. Would you pass the crackers? Oh my 053 god. 053 pushed the bowl of saltine crackers across the table. 682 flicked a few into his mouth. Thank you, Lainey. No. I don't hate you. It's like... You're shaped like a human, you know. Oh. SCP-053 nodded. Then she looked confused. Why is that bad? Miss Rebecca says... 682 snorted. <laughs> She's just another meat bag. You like them, but they're horrible. <laughs> oh. I am not mad you want to be one. But humans are terrible. They take what they want without caring about who it hurts. They hate anyone who isn't them. They try to destroy anything that scares them even a little. And they think that only those who join them can be good. Huh. But Miss Rebecca says that- Fuck her! <laughs> 053 reached over and clasped her hands around the doll to her right ears. Mr. Elizabeth, language. SCP-682 bowed his head. <laughs> 
Sorry, lady. It's okay. You wanna play Nintendo games? Oh my I'm god. Not playing Mario Party again. Okay. Oh my god. The sheer fact this thing played Mario Party. This has got to be the most dangerous SCP in existence. Because it got 682 to play Mario Party willingly. You want to do Mario Kart? What's that like? Fun! 053 hopped off her chair and moved towards the TV. 682 tried his best to process Laney's opinions on John Green's books, but the sound of wet squelching from behind them cut through it all. He turned to see a formless monster of meat advancing towards them, more and more of it beginning to roll over the rest. The fuck is that? <laughs> the monsters. We have to go now. The what? Just go, Lizzie. SCP-682 grabbed 053 oh and threw God. her onto his back. The two took off down the hallway. SCP-053 was a little scared, but as 682 started to run, a bit of nostalgia from her childhood crept in too. She looked back to see more creatures raining from the vents, sliding out under the doors, all melting into the mass approaching them. They raced past the junction and a bit of pink flesh reached out and grabbed 682, causing the two to tumble to the ground. A tendril wrapped itself around 053's waist and started to drag her down the hallway. The flesh rotted and decayed what? and fell away. The creature screeched and began rolling around in panic as the corruption began to spread further. 053 got up, ran forward and hopped onto 682's back again. 053 leaned in and said, We have to go back for the others. They're dead. But what if they're not? If we stay, we'll both be dead too. 053 frowned and hugged 682 close as they kept running. New flesh fell out of the neighboring corridors. 682 was coming up on the end of the long hallway now. They'd made a few wide turns with little effort, but the sharp corner ahead of them was approaching quickly. The flesh monster still rolled its way down the hallway after them, a bit slower but just as determined. The tendrils stretched out in front of it though, moving just fast enough to keep up. 682 decided to take a calculated risk and did not try to avoid the wall in front of him. There you go. The two of them burst through it and landed in a sandy clearing. A tall fence could be seen in the distance, though the earth itself seemed barren for miles around. No trees, no birds, no grass even. He could feel almost a sense of relief that the life in this place was gone. Then he felt the sun. Oh no. 053 didn't understand why 682 had stopped. To her, the sun was the same as it had always been, but she could see the flesh monster advancing down the hallway they'd just left. She leaned forward and begged him to move, but he stood still as the sun beat down on them both. Oh my god. He stared at the sun. It was beautiful. He felt the light dancing inside his head. Something inside 682 was being pulled at. The edges of his being were being folded in. This thing was trying to take him, to make him a part of the group, to have him join them this in an eternal, everlasting peace. It loved him, and he loved it. There would be no more pain, no more suffering, just togetherness. What? He only need reject the monster riding on his back. He need only rip her throat out and end her once and for all. Just a simple kill and fuck that. Dad, yes! He realized he didn't have much time at all, but he wasn't sure how to handle this. Then his body did what it always did. Tendrils sprang out from his legs, sucking the sand and rocks from the ground. They then rose up, holding the boulders aloft. His tail disappeared into his body, the tissue being recycled. What? His skin began to flatten and calcify. Soon enough, an umbrella of sorts composed of rock and inorganic material was standing above him, sheltering them both from the light. The flesh and scales that were beginning to sloth were molted off. It fell off of him and then started to flop around on its own in the sunlight. 682 was repulsed to see a crude version of himself rise up from the puddle. 053 was still firmly holding on to 682 as this happened. She was saying something. Mr. Elizabeth, you have to move now. Trust her. And with that, SCP-682 and SCP-053 ran towards the fence in the distance. Using his new weight to his advantage, 682 charged through the perimeter fences and kept running. The flesh monster screeched in anger behind them, but slowly was left behind. <laughs> I love this series. I love this series so much. Shit. Alpha 1, in 
Form 2, we may have lost the site. No word from Darren, and 001 constructs have overrun the facility. I'm going to send Epsilon 9 and the new guys to check it out. I'm guys. digging up a large mass, moving away from the facility at speed. If it's what I think it is, we may have a problem here. It's a bit larger than normal. The man's cloak billowed in the breeze coming from the hole in the site wall. In one hand he held a small flamethrower, and in the other, a battered improvised spear. He stepped over the rubble and entered a hole in the side of the wall. <laughs> Another man appeared from a side room, also adorned in a cloak made from a rug, and also clutching a spear and flamethrower. Eric, anything? He asked the man. She's not in her room, and the fire guys have checked the basement. The lizard isn't there either. Seems her hunch was correct, Jamal. A young girl immortal to the sunlight is out there somewhere with a homicidal, psychopathic monster that hates all life. <laughs> we're the ones that need to try and find them. Eric held up a hand to silence him as new instructions came through his earpiece. We've got a bail. Flesh her five mics out. The fire dudes are ordering us back to the helicopter. The two quickly jumped out of the hole and hurried back to the group. The fire eaters were there waiting for them and ushered them into the waiting helicopter. Curry MREs tonight. <laughs> Dinner for champions. Yes. <laughs> Who would have thought we would miss those IKEA meatballs? Love it. I love it. I had completely forgotten about the guys. I had completely forgotten about them. Thank you all so much for watching and for your patience. Guys, this series just catches you right in the feels. I was so concerned something bad was going to happen to those two, even though it's 682. Like, I love what they've done with this story. They've taken several... Um, what are you grunting about? Why don't you come over here? It's because the hospital is cooking bacon. That's what's going on right now, guys. She's cooking bacon, so this one's freaking out. I guess she smelled it. I smelled it a little bit later, but I guess she smelled it first. Guys, I love what he's done with some, some of these SCPs. 682, you really aren't supposed to feel sympathy for the thing, but I felt sympathy for it there, even though it's a mass murdering genocidal creature. Space Marines. Anyhow, guys, Mr. Illustrated, his links are going to be in the description down below. I highly suggest you go check him out. Um... This has been a, one of the most enjoyable series I've checked out. Um, one of these days, I hope I can do something similar for my like myself. Um, only problem is everybody seems to not like it when I'm serious. <laughs> everybody seems to like the rage. <laughs> yes, everyone likes the rage. Yes. Guys, I'm going to head out. Be sure to check Mr. Illustrator's links. And... Check my own while you're down there. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'm going to shut up because this thing is ready to go. Yes, you're ready to go. I hear you. I'm letting you out. Oh. Let me see if she comes over here. Come here, sweetie. Hey, come here. Come here, Volcano. I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying anything. But... She is looking kind of chunky now, isn't she? Oh. More Puglars? Are there going to be more Puglars? Are there going to be more Puglars?